Hey guys, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com. We're going to shoot a video on a high school kid. How old are you? 15 that's starting powerlifting and wants to have a squat looked at for technical proficiency. So what we're going to do is set him up exactly like what he's got at school or at the house, which is a normal power rack and a normal bar. And we're going to take some looks and see what his natural form looks like and then try to make some technical adjustments. He's well over six foot. How tall are you? Yeah, he's six foot, 240, 240. So he's a big kid. So um, we should be seeing some interesting technical stuff. I know he's been watching a a lot of my stuff so he's probably picked up a little bit but let's see what he's been doing right and what we might need to fix so let's get at it all right so let's see how he lines up with the bar first so as we can see he takes a real narrow hand position which is pretty common for a kid that doesn't have any shoulder mileage yet he already carries the bar pretty low that's good it's right on top of the rear delt so that's not a bad spot there so let's see where he walks out okay he takes good efficient walks steps back to get set up now let's see what he does from there all right Good. Now let's rack it. Okay. Now a lot of people will say, well, you can see a lot right there and you can, but the problem is, is that what we have to do is get a little bit of loading on there because the problem is with a, with a regular bar and no weight on it, the body may be doing things it's not supposed to do, or maybe he's bending that way all the time. So let's see, let's put a 45 on each side. So he squats about 350, just do a powerlifting meet last week. Okay. Okay. All right. So we just did a push pull meet. So we didn't do a squat uh, competition. So this ought to be still fairly fresh for him. So let's see what a plate looks like. Okay. Good. Rack. So we're making the same kind of little things that we might need to fix. But what we want to do is get to a weight. I like, for technique, I like to use around 50, 60% because it's heavy enough to, to actually feel some decent weight, but it's light enough to make form corrections and not be close to maximum. So for him, that's going to be about 185. So we're going to put a plate and a quarter on each side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rest a minute or two. That way we're making sure that fatigue is not an issue. So we're going to let him do this one exactly the same, no coaching, and then we're going to start coming in and fix and some issues. The key to watching somebody at this strength level and at this age in training, you've been training for six months, eight months, somewhere around there. For someone, if you have a, a mat winning around you or if you have somebody that's highly educated in their training, they can look at lower weights and see those microscopic inefficiencies in their movement and they can train you quickly. The reason we use max effort as a training tool to see where your weaknesses are is as you get higher up in that RPE, the weaknesses are more visual. They're easier to see. So Matt can see that with just the bar, but he's not going to say that to everybody because it takes decades to develop that eye. So when we talk about seeing something with just the bar, it's because we've been looking at a long time and there's a lot of education there. Most people are going to have to go up to 50, 60, 70 percent before things start to break and you can really tell what's going on. So let's do this one and let's see what this looks like. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay, rack it. Mm. So with 50, 60%, let's stand there like you're going to squat, but you don't have the, you have the bar on your back for 10. So if you watched, the first thing actually that I'm looking at is everything is a chain, but the chain stops at the floor. So what I'm doing is watching his foot pressure. Right when he took off, he turned his ankle in and he lifted his heel and then he reset it. So that's automatically telling me he's loading the anterior part of the leg and he's avoiding some of this hamstring glute activation, which is very common at this age and this build and this experience level. So what we're gonna do this next rep is I'm gonna teach him when he gets ready to squat, he's gonna be on the side. Yeah. See how he just lifted that he almost just lifted his arch and pushed out this way that's going to force right here to be the primary actor so i'm going to try to tell him to push his yeah exactly i'm going to push his feet out and keep his heel drilled into the ground so let's see what th that does on this next rep so do everything the same but when you get ready to go down you're going to push out on those feet hard yep take your time now push out on those feet like a brick a little better a little better and you can see at the bottom, you can still see, go ahead and rack, you can still see his heel slightly come up off of the ground, which is telling me that this right here is firing 100 miles an hour and this is still the issue. So even though I told him to do that with his feet, as soon as he broke down to go downward, the eccentric part of the motion, he went right to where he was at his strongest. So now what we're gonna do is look at the top of the chain. So this next rep here in a minute or two, what we're gonna do is I want you to, you see where the bottom of that flag is? That black flag? No, up on the wall. The flag? So you wanna keep your eyes 
on the bottom of that flag. I don't want you looking down straight. I want you to look at that flag, just the bottom of it, okay? So remember your foot pressure and your eyes. And let's see what that does. So what I like to do when you're fixing somebody's squat, look at the floor and look at the head. If you fix the bottom and the top, the middle fixes itself a lot of times. All right, let's try it again. So he's gonna set it up. Now he's gonna draw his feet out as hard as he can. He's gonna lift his eyes, keep his eyes on the top of that. That just fixed a lot of it. Yep, crack it, good. So we can see that the head position actually fixed a lot of the torso issues that we were initially seeing. So if we get his eyes, I'm not saying to look at the ceiling, but if we get his eyes just a little bit higher, he'll pick his sternum up and that's gonna put the pressure back on his posterior chain. We still got a lot of work to do with his feet. So let's have him pull his shoes off and then I want him to stand right in front of me and let's take a look. I could have told you right then and there he has flat feet. Now I want you to push out like you're pushing out as hard as you can. Nope, see when you pushed out, you turn your toe out. I'm talking about this. Uh -oh. Yeah, look what it just did to his arches. It just made his arches bow. So he just went from flat footed to arched. You will always be able to tell, in my personal opinion, somebody that's super strong can use their hips a ton. Look at my arch. Look how tall it is. Compare, now put yours flat like you were. Look at the difference in our feet. So that is for me pushing out to the point that I'm almost creating more of an arch. That's making my glute medius and maximus turn on and making my hamstring help. His foot's completely flat. So what we gotta do is we gotta train that arch by him pushing out. Because his natural motion, I guarantee you, if we were to go as heavy as we possibly could today, his, his anterior knee is gonna bow in. So when he goes down into a squat, he's going this way when it gets heavy. I guarantee it. So what we gotta do is we gotta fix that, okay? So what I want you to do is this next set, think about your arch in your foot, push out when you go down and keep your eyes up, okay? Now this next step, we've fixed the eyes and the foot. The next Next thing you need to do is when you your first motion to go down when you're set up and ready the first motion to go down isn't to bend your knee you push your knee out and that forces you to sit back okay uh no keep them off now remember when you start to go down don't start turning your feet out all that's doing is making more pressure at your knee and taking it off your hip so let's see if we can see an arch when you get ready to squat so set it up get your feet right yep make your arch fix your eyes now, remember, you're, you're pushing your knees out to go down. Oh, yep, 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 open, 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 and up. Fixed almost 95% of the problem in five minutes. Feel a lot different? Yeah. Do you feel like you had a lot more spring out of the bottom? Yeah. Now you're using six or eight muscles to do the work instead of one or two. So when you were initially doing that with your head a little down and your feet caved in, all you're really standing up with is your back and your knees. You're not using any glutes. Okay, well, let's take off the quarter and put 225 on and clip it and try that. So you see how flat-footed he was when he first started? A flat foot will make your knees buck in. You're nailing it. I think the hardest thing for people is to understand different cues. Everybody's brain works a little bit different. So Matt's talking about pushing your knee out. This isn't a question of mobility. It's a question of which muscles you're using. So mm -hmm. when you talk about pushing your knee out, some people think that that's just mobility. Like that isn't going to turn your hips on as much as pushing out, like yep. trying to spread the floor. Like if you pretend there's a sheet of paper under you and you're trying to rip that sheet of paper pushing out, you know, that may work and click for people better than just pushing your knees out. So you know if it doesn't make sense right away that's okay like just keep focusing and keep watching the stuff and learn different cues and eventually it'll click a lot of times what i will do you notice i pulled his feet pulled his shoes off and watched his arch go from flat to arched yep. that's automatically when you know the pressure's right is when that arch gets enhanced not flattened um and that's that's a huge component and you want to fix that now at 15 years old by the time he's 18 19 he's going to have a little bit more of an arch on his foot but he's going to have a lot more power because now his leg and his hip all work together but right now as tall as he is and as long as his femur is all he was using to squat was his knee and his back now he's using his hips all right go ahead now remember your arch and your foot and then lock your eye now remember, we're pushing and spreading the floor. Spread the floor up, there it is. That's about as good as it's gonna get. See the difference in how it looks? That's the difference. So I would do it the same way. Feet, eyes, pressure. If you do those two things before you take off, every time, make it instinctive. You won't even have to think about it anymore. You brace, you brace before anything starts to happen. So before you start to go down, you lock in as tight as you can. Any motion on the way down, not braced, is a massive waste. Because I guarantee you, you wouldn't lose that brace. 900 was on the bar because you'd fall and hit the ground. Make sense? Treat this like it's 900 every time. Yep, take your time, get your feet right. Now get that up, get that arch. Now push out, head up tall, sit back, push it out, push it out. Two, one, up. Yep, good. Crack. There 
we go. Because what's going to happen is, in most cases, rep one and rep five are not going to look the same. You're going to start degradating form. Well, then the more reps you do with bad form, the more your body thinks it's okay to go to that when you get heavy. So there's a big difference between a good one rep max squatter and just being a guy that squats in the gym. You know, your technique is going to be everything to hit in monster weight. So with core lifts, you know, like, you know, I did that 520 for 24. I didn't even, Rob, Rob probably has only seen me use the classic lift for rep burnouts five times in 12 years. And that's including uh, squat bench deadlift. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All three. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Five times. Maybe. <laughs> so those those lifts, and I actually talked about that in a hypertrophy video that got real um, misunderstood, but we don't use the core lifts for hypertrophy because you're going to degradate technique um, most of the time, unless you're a super skilled lifter. Technique, like when you do burnouts on the bench or burnouts on the squat, usually by the time you're getting close to fatigue, your form's going to go to hell in a handbasket. If you watch me do 520 for 24, every rep looks the same. Not one deviation from rep one to 24, but that takes 20 years to be able to hold that technique. My body does not know how to bend incorrectly anymore. That takes a lot of practice. So when you're learning this stuff, we're just taking you up so you can feel the difference. Uh, but like I said, you know, 325 for five in reality and as a power lifter should be 405, not 365 or 70 because 325 for five is like a 25 second set. You know what I mean? That's a long time. So again, think of it like, uh, you know, like Ben Johnson, the same bolt, all the runners, they don't ever do 200s to get good at a 100, right? So you have to be careful. Now, belt squats and accessory work, take those reps up to the moon. Classic core lifts, be careful utilizing rep calculators and doing things till failure because you're, you're still learning technique. You can bring all that stuff back in once your technique is so solid that nothing can break it but you find it very, uh, very rare that that happens at 15 years old. There you go, lock it back in, yep, good. Get your feet right, take your time. Now, yep, big arch in your foot, eyes locked, push out first. Out, out, two, one, hit! Good, easy, crack. You can already tell this form is nearly perfect now. Now this is very, very, uh, different for most 15 year olds. They're not gonna be <laughs> six foot, they're not gonna be 240, right. and they're not gonna be able to take these coaching cues this fast. You're gonna do three plates, quarter, two and a half, and you're gonna walk over the PR today, and you're done.